In this video, I'm gonna get the Rx dependencies required so that I can return a flowable object from the retrofit request. So like right here, I'm returning a call object. We're going to be returning something known as a flowable object, which is an Rx object. And that's gonna make it very, very easy for us to make network requests with retrofit. And uh, we basically won't need to do any kind of threading. We won't need to use you know, async task, executors, threads, anything like that, everything's already taken care of with RxJava. And another really nice thing about returning a flowable from a retrofit request is I can take it a step further and inside the view model, I can actually convert the flowable object to a live data object. So that's gonna make it really easy to fit into our MVVM architecture and feed that live data back to the UI. But that's gonna be, I believe, in the next video. But uh, this video is gonna be on flowables and actually returning a request, a retrofit request. So the first kind of step here is I'm just going to bring up a internet browser is we need to get the Rx Java dependencies. And in actuality, there's two dependencies that you could potentially get the Rx Android dependency and the Rx Java dependency. In this case, we just need the Rx Java dependency, which you can get from this this GitHub page right here. So reactive X Rx Java wiki getting started, you can find the dependency here. Or you can just go to the master branch for the source code for this project, and that's where I'm going to get it from because I've already got it ahead of time. I'm just going to copy it in. That way, I don't have to change those single quotations like we have to do every single time. I hate doing that. Uh, so you don't need the RX Android one, even though it's in here. You just need the RX Java one. So that's going to be that one right there. Now I'm going to go back to our project, go to the build.gradle file, and I'm going to paste it in at the bottom here, and then press sync. And uh, just kind of as a side note, if you don't know a lot about RxJava and you want to know more, um, I, I have a course on my website, it's free. You can just go to, uh, it's on the front page here, RxJava right there. If you scroll down on the front page, RxJava, Rx Android for beginners. I take you through a whole bunch of articles and examples of uh, different use cases with RxJava, Rx Android, and how to take advantage of uh, the operators and the threading and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, take a, take a look at that if you want more information on RxJava. Okay, so at this point we have the dependency for RxJava itself, meaning we can actually use flowable objects because that's an RxJava object, but we don't have a way to convert retrofit call objects to those flowable objects. So to do that, uh, you used to not be able to do that out of the, out of the box. Uh, by default, but now Square has built a library. Actually, Jake Wharton built a library and now Square maintains it. Uh, and you can get it right here. So Square Retrofit Tree Master Retrofit Adapters RX Java 2. And you can get the dependency here. And this is going to allow us to convert a retrofit call object to either an observable or a flowable. Uh, so that's the dependency right there. But once again, I'm going to be getting it from the source code for this project just because it'll be easier. I don't have to change those single quotations. So I'm copying that right there, the Rx call adapter dependency. Uh, going back to Android Studio, and I'm going to paste that in right there. So that's uh, that's going to be the call a, a retrofit call adapter for converting a retrofit call object to a flowable object. And of course, we need to actually apply this to our retrofit instance to be able to do that conversion. So I'm going to go into the app module where our retrofit instance is living. And I want to go add call adapter factory. And I want to do rx uh, java2 call adapter factory dot create. And that, that's all I need to do. Now I can go into the auth API and I can return a flowable object from that, that, uh, that retrofit call. Now that we've got our Rx dependency, we've got our uh, call adapter, we're ready to actually make that retrofit request. And if we want to make that retrofit request, we need to accurately model the data. Because right now I'm just returning a flowable of a general response body, and I'm, this is a fake method basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this, and we're going to actually build the real model for the response and build the real API method. So I'm going to open up a new browser window, go to the JSON placeholder API website, and I'm going to take a look at the data that we need to model. So I'm clicking on users, and uh, each of these individual users is the request that we want to return. So basically, I don't need all of these properties. I'm just going to use a couple. I'm going to use ID, username, email, and website just to kind of pick out some at random. Um, remember, this is just a demonstration. 
if you were building an actual application, you would obviously have a different data set. Um, so I'm just going to pick a couple at random here, and that's the ones that are going to define what it means to be a user. So if you've used Retrofit before, you should be very familiar with this process. I'm going to create a new package in the main package directory named models. And now inside models, I'm going to create our first model. That's going to be a user object. So now what does it mean to be a user? Well, I just I just described that to you. It's going to be uh, there's going to be an integer. So private int ID, private string username, private string email and private string website. That's what it's going to mean to be a user. Uh, and since we're using retrofit, we need to add some annotations to be able to serialize the data coming in from the API. So I need to use the at serialized name annotation and the at expose annotation. The uh, at serialized name annotation will tell the JSON converter what to look for in the response. So if I look at the placeholder API, I have a field named ID. So I'm telling it to look for that field named ID and parse it from the response. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm actually just going to copy both of these. So I'm copying both of those. This is going to be username. I'm just going to copy that again, paste that in paste that in, change this one to username, change this one to website. And there we go. Now we have our, our fields set up in the, in the uh, user class. Now I'm going to press Alt Insert and insert the default constructor. I'm going to highlight all those fields. I'm also going to insert an empty constructor. So I'm just click, clicking on Select None, give myself some more room down here. And I need to add the getter and setter. So Alt Insert one more time grab those getter and setters and insert them. And there is our data model for our user objects. Now I can go into the API and I'm going to return a flowable. It's going to be of type user. And I'm going to, uh, I need to annotate this with add get. Inside of the get, I'm going to write users slash ID because ID is going to be the variable. Since each user is identified by their ID. So this is just a list of all the users. But if I wanted to get a particular user, I could type slash one, and that would return, that should return a single, whoops, that should return a single user, users slash one, yeah, that returns a single user. Uh, you know, I could do any of them, obviously. Users exist from zero to 10, so if I go to 11, I should get nothing. See, there's no, no response, but if I go to 10, then I get the 10th user. So the variable is ID here. Uh, so I'm gonna call this method get user, and it's going to take a single single field we need to use at path and then ID to match the ID that's being passed right here. This variable needs to or this text needs to match that text. I'm telling retrofit that that's where the variable is going to be passed. And uh, that should be it. Adding a semicolon down here. Next, we need to add internet permission since we haven't added that yet. So I'm going into the manifest users permission internet. And the last step now is we're going to do a test a test request before we move on. So I'm going to go into the view model, which is in the UI auth auth view model. And I'm going to do a test request just to make sure that everything is working. So I've already injected the API. So now I just need to actually make the request. So auth API get user, I'm just going to pass a user ID of one, you can pass anything, I'm going to write to observable to convert that flowable object to an observable. I want to subscribe on a background thread, so schedulers.io. Once again, if you don't know what I'm doing here, this is Rx Java stuff. Um, if you if you want more information on Rx Java stuff, check out my free course on my website uh, because once again, this is a course on Dagger. I don't want to spend time talking about Rx Java. But basically, what's happening is I'm I'm making the request and I'm doing it on a background thread. That's the general uh, general thing that I'm doing here. So I'm subscribing to this observable. I'm creating a new observer to observe the observable, so new observer. And inside the on next method is where we'll be able to tell if the request was successful. So basically here, if uh, this prints out the email, we know that the request was successful. So I'm gonna add a semicolon down here, and I'm just gonna add a log E for debugging, just in case something does go wrong, I'll get some information about what went wrong. So that's it, let's, uh, let's run the app and see if we are able to successfully make a request to the API. Okay, so the app's running. I'm gonna open up the log here. I have the app on the screen. Uh, let's see, we set, we have view model is working 
and we have on next being called and we have that email printed out. So we're able to successfully return uh, the user with the user ID of one from the API. So the overall, everything is working as we expect. Now in the next video, I'm going to um, convert this flowable object from the response to live data and feed it back to the to the UI in auth activity. So, so that whole the whole video is going to be about how to convert a flowable object, an RX flowable object, to live data so it can be sent to the AP to the UI and uh, stay consistent with our MVVM architecture.